What's going on, everybody? I am Broken Games HDR, and this is my review for Kana Bridge of Spirits. So, Kana Bridge of Spirits is an action adventure game developed and published by a team of 15 people at Ember Lab. Ember Lab began as a studio that actually specialized in animation and digital content and has made animated shorts for Coca Cola, Hisense, MLB, and some others. Now, Kana Bridge of Spirits is their first venture into video game development. I looked forward to Kana since its reveal, but I was always concerned that their inexperience in video game design would manifest in the game. For the most part, I am happy to say that my worries were, for the most part, unfounded and Ember Lab released an impressive experience I would recommend everybody play. Kana Bridge of Spirits is obviously about Kana, and she's a spirit guide who helps spirits that are trapped in limbo or purgatory because they are still burdened with some type of trauma tying them to the physical realm. The Rot are these little spirits that help Kana cleanse the world of the corruption. This game does an amazing job at fleshing out characters through exposition and well-written cinematic cutscenes. The antagonists are conflicted individuals who never had a chance to deal with their pain while living. So I love that they made the antagonists in the game nuanced and complex individuals and not just like these evil people that are bad for the sake of just needing bad guys for the game. Diving into each character's background helps to humanize them and behind all of the characters dilemmas is an actual real world life lesson about hurt, trauma, and pain, and the consequences of not being able to deal with it and heal from it. The voice acting is also excellent and delivered in a way that truly reflects anger, sadness, and the bevy of other emotions that the various characters displayed. The narrative touches on elements of relationships that kind of surprised me, especially for a game that ostensibly at least looks like it's for kids or a general audience. It's almost like the animated kids movies nowadays uh, that are look like they're for kids, but they really touch on a lot of adult themes that go over the kids' heads, but us as adults, when we watch them, we notice them. And there's also like this underlying lonely, morbid, and melancholy side to Kana's journey. And Kana is not without her own issues. Introspectively, she is a scarred character that goes on this journey to help others with their problems, and that's her job as a spirit guide, but she has still not dealt with her own issues and resolved all of her own problems. So it was pretty interesting to notice the dichotomy or the parallel of what she's doing and also what she's dealing with. So let's talk about gameplay now because gameplay is king. So Kana is about a 15 hour experience that paces itself extremely well. That is important because when you're working within that time span, you have to evolve the game at a fast enough pace for the player to experience every aspect and mechanics of the game, but not too fast that they're overwhelmed. Gameplay wise, Kana starts out very basic, but basic combat, platforming, mechanics, and overall game segments. And I was worried that it would stay that way, uh, especially when I looked at the skill tree and there were only about 15 upgrades there. As I stated previously, my worries were, you know, pacified pr pretty quickly. Kana's abilities, along with the skill tree upgrades, add enough variety to the game that it never feels dull or repetitive. I played on Expert Spirit Guide, which is equal to hard, and the difficulty of this game is deceiving because, because of its soft and inviting appearance, obviously, right? But the game is challenging, and the enemies will test you, especially the bosses. The boss fight designs are great, and the last five bosses are exceptional and my personal favorites. The platforming evolves nicely, and becomes creative, especially when Kana's abilities expand. Kana's movement is very responsive, but it feels weighty and grounded at the same time. The Rots assist Kana in several different ways, such as attacking enemies, buffing her abilities, moving objects, and retrieving health. 
You can also customize the rot by collecting different hats for them, which are placed around the hub world, which is a nice touch, I guess, for some cute points because some people fall for that type of stuff. Now, to use the rot for any action in combat requires courage, or as I like to refer to it as the rot meter. You gain courage by engaging enemies in combat. You have to use this meter very wisely though, because it builds somewhat slowly and you will often be in a situation where you have to choose between using the meter to get some health back or using the meter to do an upgraded attack on an enemy or possibly to send the rot to temporarily stun an enemy. So you gotta use the, the meter very wisely. Rot are hidden all over the game's levels so it's very important to find as many as you can to unlock more of the skill tree. Exploration is also key because the world is full of items and collectibles to make the game easier, such as meditation spots, uh, which increase Kana's health, and opportunities for karma, which is XP. Using the shield and landing parries will be life or death in this game. There is a pretty small parry window and there also seems to be a slight delay on actually doing the parry. So learning the timing is paramount. The level design is intuitive and well made, though there are some instances that you will come across that show the limitations of the studio's experience in gaming. There aren't a lot of puzzles in Kana, but the ones that are there, they all feel purposeful and they use the environments as hints and clues to solving. One thing the game is lacking is New Game Plus, and that's needed very badly because the only other option is to pretty much start a brand new game to play it on the newly unlocked difficulty, but you'll have to start from complete scratch and collect everything all over again in the world, the rot and everything else, which honestly the first time is a big endeavor, so the second time would just be a huge burden and a chore. So that's not something most of us are gonna wanna do, so hopefully they release a patch for New Game Plus soon. Kana is an absolutely beautiful game, but it's pretty static. You shouldn't play this game expecting a high level of physics or realistic behavior from the environment. There isn't any snow deformation when you walk in it, bushes don't move when you interact with it, and trees aren't necessarily swaying in the wind. If you're looking for that level of attention to detail, then you may be disappointed. Even given that fact, the world still feels very much alive because they have curated a great atmosphere to the point where you don't really notice the aforementioned things. The water detail is gorgeous, aside from the waterfalls, which still need a little bit of work, and the game has a wide linear hub design. It has very open areas and that eventually converge and mostly give you the illusion that it's more open because essentially it's there's only one or two ways to get to a, a certain point, right? And these areas are condensed with plenty of points of interest, right? One of the reasons Kana turned out so well is because in my opinion, they kept the scale and the scope of the game within reason. They didn't try to do too much because sometimes trying to do too much can be a game's downfall. On PS5, the game has a fidelity mode which runs at 4K 30 and the performance which I believe is reported to be around 1800p at 60fps. The technical performance is pretty stable throughout the entire game with only a few sections with frame rate dips and slowdowns. The worst instance of this for me was at the final boss where there are a lot of enemies on screen and the frame rate appeared to drop to like the 30s or maybe even below that for a few moments. And I'm someone who's very sensitive to motion blur, so I was disappointed that at least the PlayStation 5 version has no option to completely turn off motion blur. Even though it's not that terrible in, in this game, I've seen it a lot worse in other games, but it still bothered me. I'm not sure if the PC version has an option to turn off motion blur, but most uh, PC versions do, so I assume it does. Now, cutscenes are at 30 or t maybe even 24 frames, which may be intentional for cinematic effect, but I personally hate when cutscenes run 
at lower uh, frame rates because it's very jarring to go from 60 or higher to 30 or lower. And the game is gorgeous and makes good, good use of particle effects, uh, lighting, some weather effects in, in certain sections, and these vibrant, lush environments. And I'm not someone who's, you know, a music enthusiast as far as gaming goes, but I was impressed by Kana's OST. It's nice, like, peaceful, you know, meditation music, mostly, you know, throughout the game, but during the boss fights, it gets real intense, and they really set the tone and the mood for those fights. So here is my verdict for Kana Bridge of Spirits. It's one of the best games of the year. The story is compelling with an endearing cast, it's challenging, and you will die, especially to these bosses. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of how many times. And I love that because I love challenging games. I love learning enemy patterns, reading the telegraphs, and overcoming hard enemies. The game is beautiful, with great music, and it's really admirable what Ember Lab was able to do with only 15 employees and their first time developing a game. I give Kana Bridge of Spirits an 8.5. Thank you for watching my video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the review. Follow me on Twitter, links in the description for that. Subscribe if you're not, hit the notification bell if you haven't, so you can be notified anytime I upload a video. And I will catch y'all on the next video. Thank you. Peace.